Okay, welcome to another episode of On the Wrist from Off the Cuff. Today, I have a really cool update for you from the brand D1 Milano. A little bit about them, they were founded in 2013 out of Milan, Italy, and currently they have offices in Dubai and Hong Kong and are distributed in 28 different countries across hundreds of stores. Uh, they definitely have a clear Gerald Genta steel sports inspired design aesthetic without being a direct homage to any specific model reference. In terms of the type of watch, I'd consider this an everyday watch, some key common characteristics in design language you're looking for something you can wear every day, you're really just going to want that versatile blend of sporty and dressy attributes. This is their Marco Braca Automatico, and it's essentially a new for 2023 updated and improved version of their popular Automatico line. Uh, it's, a, it's actually a collaboration with um, an Italian watch YouTuber named Marco Braca. And uh, this model really takes their latest Automatico and shrinks it down to a super wearable 36 millimeters. The price is also still pretty good at um, 695 direct from D1. And uh, I think this was a really interesting one. I was, when I originally reviewed the 40 millimeter variation, I was kind of like, I think a 38 millimeter would be perfect. Um, has the 36 millimeter changed my mind? Uh, you've got to stay tuned to find out. So with all that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand and take a closer look. Okay guys, now uh, side by side, the 40 millimeter versus the 36, I'd say the 36 looks a lot smaller. Um, and uh, do I think that it looks undersized? I don't think the watch case itself appears undersized. I think where it really, uh, unfortunately for me and my larger wrists, uh, gets really, really kind of small wearing is because of how dramatic the taper is on this bracelet. It gets quite thin and um, and because of that, I wish that it either had less of a taper or that it was slightly larger um, just because I, I feel like, and you guys will see this when we get to the on the wrist shots, of course in hand, do I think the watch is small? No, I don't. I think it's actually a very nice size watch. Again, it's really more about how dramatic the taper is, which which I mean makes sense, right? Because it's a dramatic taper on the larger version, but because it is larger, it only tapers down to probably around 18 millimeters versus around 15 millimeters that you're gonna see here. So um, it's definitely a noticeable difference uh, from that aspect. Um, but to get into the details of this particular variation, which already one thing you're noticing is the cool dial color, which I think is really fantastic and really well done. They call it petrol blue, um, and it has these, this great kind of greenish hue to it, but it's still clearly a blue dial, and you can see the sunray finish is really fantastic. Now, in terms of the dimensions, it's 36 millimeters in diameter, 9.2 millimeters thick and 44 millimeters lug to lug. So very compact lug to lug there, again, helping this wear a little bit smaller. So if you have smaller wrists, I think this will really, really excite you. So if you have, you know, uh, seven and below, this is, I think, could be absolutely perfect for you. So keep an eye out. Um, the you know, the case here, it's definitely all stainless steel, brushed and polished. You do have, it's mostly brushed uh, pretty much when you get down to the bracelet. Uh, and the polish accents are really just more so around uh, the bezel there, which look fantastic. And then um, everything else, I mean, it's just really well done. I, I just love, that's one of the things I really enjoy about D1 Milano is they really go the extra mile in terms of, you know, the flat brushing, uh, they do a really good job with that. Uh, no, it's not like high end hot horology level by any means, but it is very, very clean and very handsome and honestly is befitting a steel sports watch because it does feel a bit tougher um, and, and very well built and very solid because of the construction style. Now, when we look at that bezel, you do get the nice vertical brushing with, of course, the high polished accent. And then we get to the back, although you can't see it, underneath there you actually get a 9039, which is a no date Miyota movement, which is nice. So it's nice and thin. You're not getting a ghost position, something that people really enjoy not having. Uh, I don't mind it so much, but it's cool when it's not there. I, I do give it, uh, you know, I, I consider that a plus. Now, um, in terms of a 
uh, the dial, you get some nicely applied indices. You get, of course, that petrol blue dial with a sunray pattern. You're getting polished hands. There's no loom on here, although the hands do give you an appearance and a reflection like there's going to be loom, but there's no loom. Um, Another improvement is they actually increase the water resistance to 10 atmospheres or 100 meters, uh, which is also nice. You're also getting a screw down crown, which is fantastic. Uh, and then, of course, this integrated design. And then it's going to taper from about 24 millimeters down to 15. And uh, that is quite thin. It's using push pin connectors. You get this really cool kind of uh, hidden clasp feature there, as you can see, beautifully integrated. You can't even see it. And then it's actually friction fit. So you kind of have to know where to pull. Um, in this case, this side, uh, as you see the D1 Milano signature right there, and you can see that it is very nicely done. Um, it is, you know, it does take some getting used to because it is, uh, at the end of the day, friction fit, um, but it also keeps things very svelte and very, very thin. Um, and then in terms of just some differences on the dial, apart from there being no date, you can see they also broke down, um, which I think they did, it looks nice as well, is that uh, outer index, uh, actually is broken down into sub seconds uh, versus it just being uh, 60 minutes all the way around. So that also looks very, very nice. And you can see the difference in the blues there. Uh, one very true sedate uh, kind of deep navy blue versus this petrol blue, which is really fun and really, really pops. Um, so very, very cool. And uh, I dig this. And one thing you probably noticed in the background is this. And this is actually a special strap that comes with it. So the good news is, uh, if you do feel like this is a bit too drastic of a taper for you, the strap, it doesn't taper as much. It's only gonna uh, taper to 16 millimeters at the buckle. So you are gonna get a little bit more thickness if you did want to swap over to the strap instead of the bracelet. For me, um, because of the kind of color match, actually it's this is a really well-constructed strap, as you can see, but uh, you probably can't see is uh, how soft and supple this is. This is actually a really nice strap, but I really do like it on the bracelet, even though it does seem a little bit small. Um, but on the strap, it definitely gives it a whole new look, feels a little bit more dressy. Um, and uh, very, still very premium though. Check out that signed buckle, fully milled. Very, very nice. And uh, again, great finishing, great color there. It definitely strikes a little bit more of the teal colorway when you look at uh, the strap versus the dial. But of course, they're different textures. The dial has a sunray pattern, and then this has a matte pattern. So there's going to be certain hues and certain shades where it's really bang on match, and then others where it's going to be, you know, not quite as much of a match, which honestly, you don't want it to be too matchy, because then it's just going to kind of look odd. Um, and I'm sure this isn't really a popular clothing color um, for you to match with. So you, the last thing you want is something that looks super matchy. You, you want something that will blend really, uh, of course, with your attire so but I did want to show you guys the strap because it is actually very soft very supple and nicely packaged even so very cool the whole packaging actually for D1 typically is very very nice um, and I think uh, of course with this special edition they really took it the extra mile um, and uh, did some really cool things in terms of that but I'll leave that to you guys to be surprised by uh, once you uh, if you decide to pull the trigger on this piece but uh, with all that said uh, let's actually get this piece on wrist and see how it wears okay guys as you can see on my seven and a half inch wrist it wears actually on the smaller side a lot of it has to do with of course the small dial um, and the very large bezel um, and then what's crazy is you know even when I get very close to the camera and there's gonna be a bit of lens distortion it still doesn't feel oversized because it's is I mean to me to my eye it's slightly undersized but one thing you'll notice is where it really feels undersized is when you get to 
the bracelet and how much that taper is there. So I'm gonna go ahead and back my wrist off of the camera just so you guys can get a better look and then what I'll do is I'll tighten up the shot so that you guys can take a look here and just see uh, how dramatic that taper is. So that's really where, for me anyway, uh, it just visually doesn't look as nice as it could. Uh, I do think it does taper just a bit too much. I wish that it only would have tapered to maybe 18 millimeters and it probably would have been okay even with the smaller um, bezel, I should say larger bezel and the smaller dial. Um, but yeah, for me, a little bit out of my comfort zone being, uh, you know, having that dramatic of a taper. Uh, but I think it still looks very good. Um, you know, I just think it would probably look better as a slightly oversized watch on my uh, wife's wrist um, or one of my son's wrists versus it looking like a slightly undersized watch on my wrist. So we'll go ahead and reopen this back up here. And uh, just because we do have, of course, the model, the 40 millimeter model on hand, you guys can see for me, um, that looks a lot more proportional. I know it's gonna look very large. You get up close, guys. It is a large hunk of metal. Um, and again, I would rather it be slightly too large, which I do think that still it's slightly oversized uh, versus slightly too small there. And if we do bring it in a little bit, you can see I think it looks a lot more proportional uh, from this perspective. I do think it would be nice, of course, to be slightly smaller uh, at 38 millimeters, maybe even keep uh, this level of taper on it. Uh, it just would be slightly smaller um, at the upper aspects uh, as it comes down. But I really do dig this. It's a cool design. It's a cool company. And of course, these watches in general, you know, these porthole style, uh, Genta inspired watches are very, very popular. Um, so of course leave it to a popular Italian watch YouTuber to have them come out with this really nifty uh, version, which I think on most wrists, this will be exactly what you're looking for. Um, you know, again, my wrist is a little bit larger than the standard norms, um, but I will say uh, I do not mind the way this thing looks. It is very, very nice. Uh, although, yeah, again, just slightly small. But let me know what you guys think in the comments uh, below. Which one do you prefer on my larger wrists? Uh, you know, maybe you're going to think that this looks really great, or maybe you'll think that neither of them look look good um, but it's a really cool look it's a handsome look and uh, you know it's obviously finished very nicely so although there's no loom what we'll do is we'll get some uh, low light transition and closing thoughts okay we'll go ahead and hit the lights here all right no loom uh, but of course I like to work in some low light transition because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight a lot of times you're going to be coming in and out of buildings walking underneath overhangs or maybe just hanging out underneath the shade of a tree or inside of your favorite automobile. So it's nice to see what these colors, textures, and finishes render like in less than optimal lighting to maybe even include some harsh lighting here, which typically could expose any type of production defects. But all you're gonna really notice is uh, a couple of my fingerprints on there and uh, how really beautifully uniform that brushing is. It has a nice deep brush to it, so it does look uh, you know, quite sharp. Although it's not sharp to the touch, so sharp in, uh, in the right ways. Um, but look at the way the light, my goodness, the way it goes over that vertical brushing over the top. And I really do enjoy how dynamic that dial is with just that really beautiful bright kind of streak that goes right through the dial um, so it doesn't really wash out it typically is going to appear darker with really nice high contrast of vibrant streaks right through it so very very cool watch and i'm really glad i was able to share it with you guys so big shout out to d1 milano um, for sending this piece in and uh you know giving me a chance to review it with you all so for me guys closing thoughts on the wrist it definitely is more petite than i expected and i will say that it is probably due to that dramatic taper as well as the fact that it does have a relatively small dial 
with a large bezel. Um, I do think that, you know, if they were to make a quick change, it would probably be easier for them to just make a bracelet that doesn't taper down quite as small, and it would probably have been more wearable for me. But ultimately, if I was to do my own YouTube collaboration, I would probably have chosen a 38 millimeter size, uh, just because for me anyway, uh, that I think that would have been slightly more versatile. Although the lack of smaller sizes um, on the market uh, in terms of options for these types of watches, um, I think this bodes very strong for D1. So uh, there's some of you who are dying for a 36 millimeter variation and who are totally cool with that dramatic taper because, and, you know, with proportions being taken into mind, uh, the dimensions are really fantastic. So, um, in terms of model variants, there really aren't any for now in terms of the 36 millimeter automatico line. Uh, this is pretty much a special edition, but I'm sure we will eventually see regular 36 millimeter, um, you know, variations in the future. They'll probably have more standard dial, uh, you know, options as well as maybe even having date uh, functionality. And then in terms of comparable models, there are definitely a lot of Genta-esque integrated steel sports watches on the market today, but you know, D1 Milano continue to produce strong, really well spec offerings within the space. Um, and it's kind of their specialty versus some brands, you know, they might do something like this and, and it's a bit of a stretch for them. Here it's really D1 Milano's entire DNA is to make watches that look like this and feel like this. So uh, they're going to be really, really skilled when it comes to uh, how that bracelet lays, how the bracelet articulates, how those angles play with the light. Um, so I will say that they're experts within the field of this type of watch. Um, so it does give them a little bit of added value. And then in terms of the bottom line, guys, I think even at $695, just a hair under $700, bucks, um, you know, I think this price tag, um, it, it still looks a lot and feels a lot more expensive than that. Um, so I can't really argue with that. I know some of you will say on paper, it has a Miyota movement, you know, and Sapphire and steel, and it should cost less than uh, 699. But again, uh, or 695, um, sure you can find watches that have similar specs for less, um, but will they be built to the same quality? Will they have the same level of versatility? Um, you know, will they have a, a strong a brand behind it? You know, probably not. So uh, I will give D1 credit where credit is due. Uh, this is, you know, definitely something I know people have asked for in terms of a smaller size, including myself. Uh, this one is a little bit too small for me, um, but I think it's still a fantastic piece and will absolutely be great on a number of wrists smaller than mine. So with that said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked the video, please hit like, and if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.